out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Be viewing the outpouring for your refreshing and infilling. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit on me. Viewers, welcome today to the outpouring. And I greet you in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. It's always an honor and a privilege to come into your homes, into your places and spaces with this program, The Outpouring. This program has been going on the air in, for close to about 10 years. And I really give God thanks for TIN, for TIN having this vision and uh, most of all for me coming on board at such an early stage and uh, even now as i give god thanks for that uh, i have this today with me well he's not necessarily in the studio but he'll be online none other than prophet dave ramnat now prophet dave ramnat is no stranger to this program he has not been on very recently because with the recent pandemic and all that has happened he has not traveled to tobago i think in probably the last two years however we are going to have him on this morning and we are going to talk a little bit about revival for tobago dispelling the drought and the reigning of miracles. Now, Prophet Dave Ramnad, he is originally from Trinidad. He resides in Canada at this time, and he was given an assignment by the Lord. And the answer to his assignment, when the Lord asked him, will you go to Tobago and proclaim revival? And his answer was yes. Not knowing anyone in Tobago, even though he was born in Trinidad, he never came to Tobago in his time living in Trinidad. And now God gave him this assignment. Will you go to Tobago and will you proclaim revival? And his answer was yes. And God wants just our first yes, because in him saying yes to the Lord, the rest of it, God just worked it out step by step, inch by inch and he has now been involved in ministry in Tobago over the last three years, even though some of it had to be via online or streaming, but he continues on that mission vision. So Prophet Dave Ramnat, welcome today to The Outpouring. Thank you very much, Marva. It's always a pleasure to be in Tobago and to be on the outpouring. Uh, special thanks to TIN and to Pastor Cordell and the staff there. And we are grateful as we celebrate revival for Tobago, dispelling the drought, reigning of miracles. Amen. Prophet Dave, I know you have not been physically in Tobago, and I know you are missing Tobago, but just give us a quick idea as to where things are now, and then we will go to the beginning and come back at this place. All right. Well, uh, Charlottesville, Tobago is one of the key places that the Lord has given us instructions to go to. And anytime we go up to Charlottesville and we make decrees, the Lord answers by his divine power through his word and even through the weather pattern. And uh, we are grateful. We are actively involved in ministries across the island from Crown Point to Charlottesville on a weekly basis. Sometimes, you know, during the week, two or three times that we are in touch and we are doing stuff. We are uh, sowing seeds wherever there's an opportunity to sow seeds, which is very important because when you are looking for a harvest, the only legal way to get a harvest is via the way of sowing seeds. Thanks, Prophet. Now, I know that when you 
initially came to Tobago, you knew no one and you started with one person and that gradually increased. Could you just share with us some of the churches that you have connected to who have opened their doors to you and what kind of impact that your ministry or your call, I should say, had on these churches? Yes. And uh, the first person that I came in contact with was who is now my administrator, Miss Juliana Henry King. I'm so grateful for the call of God on her life and being obedient and walking with me through the island, like literally physically walking with me. The very first church that I visited on that Wednesday morning, the 9th of January that I came in on 2019 is in John Dial. Uh, Jesus is the answer, known as Jitter with Apostles uh, Selvin and Patricia Batiste. That's the first pastors that I shared my vision with. And after sharing the vision, Apostle Selvin asked me, so what are you doing tonight, meaning Wednesday night? I said, well, I have a, a free calendar. <laughs> he said, would you speak at my church tonight? I said, I'll be more than happy to. And that was the beginning of dispelling the drought, reigning of miracles, revival for Tobago. Amen. And tell us some of the other churches that you have connected with uh, from the inception to now. Right. Uh, Apostle Dawn Gray in uh, Bacolet and um, in Goldsboro was, it was and is a key player in this ministry vision. Um, we, from the inception, I met with a unique gentleman who I found out is Bishop Basil Edwards Church on the Rock in Lekato, Tobago. And we have been in touch and we have been doing meetings. We, we, we have uh, a lot of sessions happening and we are grateful for that. As a matter of fact, I believe Bishop Edwards has a program on uh, TIN standing yes, on the rock. Yeah. And, um, we had we met with uh, Pastor Wayne Quashi up in at that time he was up in Charlottesville now he's at Calvary Road Deliverance Tabernacle in Keenan uh, Pastor Daniel Ramdial in Bonacord um, uh, Pastor Ernest Church of the Open Bible in uh, Patience Hill I believe it is um, mm -hmm. Castara Pastor Nigel Williams in Pembroke uh, Pastor Sean Melville. Uh, in Speyside, Pastor Delvin Smart, and, and, and I'm just trying to go through uh, to make sure I remember everybody, <laughs> Pastor Wilma Phillips in Lowlands, and uh, Minister Berkeley at the outpouring <laughs> on Hartley And School. Bishop Sheldon Holder yes. and at well, Impact to Impact, saving yes. the best for us. And, no. and, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Bishop Holder, Impact to Impact International Ministries, he's got a program also on TIN. And my meeting with him did not happen in January. It happened in the month of May 2019. And we have been divinely connected by all of these pastors that I have mentioned. And there's so much more that I have met afterwards and um, you know God is good and once Isaiah 119 says when we are willing and obedient we will eat the good of the land amen you know so viewers uh, you can just by uh, prophet Dave sharing all he said was yes Lord and in saying yes to the call it just began to grow from ministry to ministry, from ministry to ministry, from grace to grace. And it's not only in the spiritual arena, but Prophet Dave, in his call to Tobago, the word of the Lord was that it's not going to be a revival like the right revivals you are accustomed to that just affects the church but the revival he said that god is sending to tobago is a revival that is going to affect every part of tobago so prophet dave could you elaborate a little on that and also share with us the political arena and other areas that you would have had contact with right this call for Tobago came to me on, on the night of April the 21st, 2018. I was on a mission trip to Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And the Lord says that I am bringing Tobago out of the shadows. For too long, she has been settling for second best. And I am bringing her to the forefront where she would be a leader 
of leaders in the Caribbean and internationally. And when the word of the Lord came to me very gently, he didn't command me. He just said, will you go? And I said, yes, Lord. I tried every avenue to find a church. Anybody, even if it's a shed on the side of the street, I couldn't get nothing. And I waited patiently before the Lord nine months before I got one open door and it had to be from the Lord. And then when I came in into the island, uh, you, you know, um, I didn't know that Tobago was under the threat of drought. And on the 10th of January, 2019, Miss King and myself, we were walking on, on the property at uh, Fort George. Nice blue skies that morning. And we heard about drought that very morning. And I said to her, we're not going to have drought in Tobago. Now get the picture on this. I know nothing about Tobago. I know no one in the land. I just hooked up with Miss King, just met uh, Apostle Selvan and Patricia Batiste, just met Apostle Dawn Gray. And here I am on the grounds of Fort King George and I'm declaring Isaiah, um, no, sorry, First Kings, um, where Elijah said, unto Ahab, get up and eat and drink, for I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And we declared that, and immediately, folks, the rain started to fall on that Thursday noontime without any gray skies around. And then after I went back to my hotel room, I checked the weather forecast, and it says less than 10% of precipitation. And when that happened, I knew I was at the right place at the right time doing the right thing. So I continue to be passionate yeah. and excited for what God is doing in Tobago. Amen. And you know, um, when I connected, I think I connected with you in May on your second trip. But when I connected to, and I compare like at that point to now, I have personally experienced a lot of uh, miracles in my life. And what I found to, to be rather interesting is that at times, and this is the prophetic gifting in you, at times you would just call and you would give a prophetic word and you will say this, that, or the other. And it is always just so on time that sometimes I'm even tempted to look around to see if you are, if you are there watching what is happening at that point point in time you know i've had <laughs> i've had some that were funny i remember once i was washing these clothes and when i wash and hang out the white clothes i would sing what um the blood the, some of the blood songs that cleanses and then i think in less than a few hours you call and you said i see you washing and you're putting in colored clothes and you're putting in white clothes you're putting in all different clothes but the interesting thing is everything is coming out white you know and whatever was happening at uh, with me at that point in time god would use you to bring you know a spiritual message i had this thing with clocks where you know if anybody train out i even got one from ti and if anybody train out an old <laughs> clock i would collect it and hang it at various areas at the outpouring, you know, like hang it on trees and all that. And you came and you just prophesied about the clock. So that aspect of your prophetic gifting, I truly thank God for that. And, you know, I've seen you operate where you have declared and make prophetic declarations over this land. And even with elections where we had that prayer at the fourth we had that early morning prayer when we had the first elections and we were up there praying the morning of elections and blowing the shofar and i just had a sense to look around at, in the sky when i look around there was this cloud exactly the shape of a man <laughs> sitting blowing the shofar you know so these little things uh, along the way are some of the miracles and while we on prophetic declarations i don't know if you have a prophetic declaration or anything you would like to pray or declare over tobago in this time in this season in this hour uh yes i do see a prophet is never without a word right and yeah. the word must be a word from the lord not out of my emotions how i feel how i think but it must be a spirit-to-spirit -spirit identification. But before I release that word, I want to just talk a little bit about 
when Tobago was under the threat of drought. And Marva, you walked through with us through those periods. And we went up to, to uh, Fort Campbellton and we made a declaration and, and we called on the heavens to open for rain. And all three times we called, rain came. And one time we went up to Flagstaff Hill and we, we saw this strange device. I'm sure you remembered it, but, and there was a sign face down. And then you, you lifted up the sign and you saw it read this, property of WASA, a rain measuring monitoring device. Yes. And here we are, we didn't know that was a rain monitoring device. The land was, the, you all were given notice by the government, prepare for drought, prepare for drought. And here I am coming on the scene and, and this is not the pump up, none of us here are superheroes. Jesus is the ultimate hero. But death, hell, and the grave. And he is the one, and we give him glory. You see, folks, here's the thing. In Mark chapter 16, it says, Jesus, after he was resurrected, and he showed himself to the disciple, he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, preaching the gospel means not only from a pulpit, but we could be the best taxi driver, the best uh, retail server, the best government employee, we can be the best where we are, and that is where we are salt and light, and we are preaching the gospel. In business, in commercial activities, in justice, in politics, in every area of life. And this revival that the Lord has brought into the island is not for the traditional church-style services where we sing, we dance, and we go home, and we come back again, and we sing, we dance. No, that is good. But this change that God is bringing you to Begonians, and wherever you're watching on this program, wherever in the world you are, you are seeing and hearing the hand of God moving on the island of Tobago. Look at the, 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 the change that happened through the electoral process and through putting in new powers to be at the Tobago House of Assembly. We are grateful because God is bringing Tobago into that unique place of success. So here's my decree over the land of Tobago this morning. And, and just come in agreement and say yes. Tobago, you are a successful land. You are a prosperous land. You are not a hard land. You are a land of prosperity. You belong to Almighty God. And your fruits and vegetations are going to be bigger and better and high in demand. Your industry is, is rising up to a place that it has never been before. Your commercial businesses that are that are inactive, that are active right now, are expanding, and there's an explosion of construction, there's an explosion of trade and commerce to the fishermen and to the fishing industries, to the fishing markets. Uh, I am declaring that the sea is going to yield the abundance and the bounty of the sea because we have addressed the spirit of Leviathan, and Leviathan has taken its hold and backed off the territorial legal water lines of Tobago. This is an exciting time for Tobago. For the churches, if you were still and if you were stagnant, now is your time to move. Now is your time to expand. Now is your time to go out to the street corners, pitch a tent and declare that Jesus is Lord. Make the salvation call and watch how the people would come in into the arms of Jesus Christ. And as they do, they will be followers of Jesus Christ. Remember pastors, leaders, ministers, apostles, evangelists, you all are fishers of men. Cast your net and catching the harvest. This is my decree for the island of Tobago. Amen. Thank you very much, Prophet Dave. Uh, I would like us to spend the balance of time. We have about nine minutes left on the program. Just sharing a little bit uh, on, because I think on our last program, we would have spoken about the week, the days of the fish, the weeks of the fish, and now the year of the fish. On Sunday, we entered our 46th week of the fish. And some of you who may be viewing this program, are you wondering, well, what fish is this, Kingfish? <laughs> um, <laughs> Jax, what kind of fish, the week of the fish? So, Prophet Dave, could you share with us just a little bit on that? But before you do, I want to just give a in fact, I will give the testimony after. You share on it, and I will give some of my personal testimonies on these weeks of the fish that brought prosperity, not only financially, but in many other areas. Right. I think it was about July last year when the Lord spoke to me, declared this is the week of the fish. So I asked, what do you mean, Lord? And he says, the fish always represents abundance, using in reference where the little boy took five loaves and two fishes, 
and Jesus touched it and it fed 5,000 people, 5,000 men. So there's more than 5,000 because now you got to include women and children. And then that little boy had 12 baskets full because of the crumbs, the fragments. That was one example. The other example that he took me to was when it was time for taxes. And yes, Jesus paid his taxes. He didn't complain that we are all over tax, right? But <laughs> Jesus paid his taxes and he directed Peter, go and cast your hook. Now, remember, Peter was a fisherman. He knew how to catch fish. But here the teacher, the Lord of Lord, is saying, go cast your hook and the first fish you catch. It's going to have money in its mouth and that there's enough taxes for you and me. And Peter did exactly that. And there was money. So the weeks of the fish, it actually was supposed to be one week. And then Marva came on on the outpouring around that time. And she announced this and she said she heard herself say the year of the fish. And I came in agreement with that and the team in Tobago. And we said we are going to do a year of the fish. And this year, ladies and gentlemen, is the year of double harvest. It's the year of surplus. And what I have done personally with any financial surplus, I am taking a note of that. So at the end of 2022, I will look back at the goodness of the Lord and be grateful as I am every day. So the week of the fish, which turned into weeks of the fish, are weeks of prosperity, surplus, abundance. Finances are included, but this covers all areas of life. Thank you, Prophet Dave. And just for me to share a bit on my experience with that, you know, where from week to week we will count so much so that we are now in the 46th week of the fish. And over these weeks, I have experienced tremendous blessings of the Lord, unexpected blessings from unexpected places. I experience favor, I experience open doors. And in, in the times when things may seem to me, you know, like how there was darkness in Egypt and light in Goshen, it's much the same way. And God has just made supernatural breakthroughs, especially in the area of finance. And I believe in the fact that if we have to receive a harvest, then we must obey the word and sow, tithe, give, do all that is required. And in so doing, it, it opens doors. So much so that recently I received such a beautiful blessing, Prophet Dave. And I'm not going to call the figure, but I received such a beautiful Mother's Day gift from my daughter away. And, you know, that, that Mother's Day gift blessed me in no small way. And it came at a time where I was a little challenged, you know, one or two different things had happened and I needed to go in a different direction. When I received that and I, it finally came in a check and I waved the check onto the Lord and even have a copy of the check, but it just shows that the blessings of the Lord make us rich and it does not add any sorrow. So that, that's just my short testimony. On yeah, the and, week. And, and I, and I remember that morning you received that. I gave you a word, Martha. Do you remember that word I called? Yes, I yes. You, um, <laughs> I think it was that you woke up early and the Lord said to you to say to me, just receive. Right. right? And I was like, okay, just receive. And in a few hours after that word, I got the call with the Western Union number, this, you know, I, I mean, it was like, just receive, just you know, receive. I did open my hands and I just received, ask no questions. And Prophet, what I, what I really admire and I love about your ministry is that it is not, um, it doesn't come decorated with frills and trills and uh, and in an unreal place where it's like you can't reach it, it doesn't come home, but your prophetic words are, are real, they're relevant, they are applicable to what one is to what one is experiencing in that point in time. And you know, we just have about four more minutes, uh, three more minutes on this program. And I want to take the opportunity to publicly honor you and thank you for saying yes to the call of God and the continuing on the call against all odds because many people start many things but uh, you know a lot of them don't finish and even though you have been 
restrained from coming to Tobago, you uh, you still continue, you know, you use every means possible and you continue on that call, on that mission, on that vision. So in the last minute, could we just have your closing remarks? Well, what I'd like to say is if you're list if you're watching this program by chance and you don't know who Jesus Christ is, please, there are numbers on your screen. Call that number. Minister Berkeley would be able to lead you into this prayer of salvation. Secondly, the thing is, is that sowing is important, you see, because if the world is saying there's famine, if you have been threatened with your dollar being devalued, if your economy is running low, turn to Jesus because he is the glory and the lifter of your head. He will supply your needs according to his riches not any man's riches remember this your job is not your source god is your source and your job is your resource and Al almighty god has always set up blessings for you so you are blessed tobago is blessed it's a joy a privilege and an honor because i am passionately continuing to work in the land that i have grown to love the land of tobago Thank you for having me here this morning, Margo. Thank you so much, Prophet Dave and viewers. Um, as Prophet Dave said, you know, we shared on revival, we shared on miracles, we shared on dispelling the drought, raining of miracles, we shared on weeks of the fish. But all of this would mean nothing unless Jesus is the Lord and Savior of your life. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. If you are viewing this program, don't let today pass without you making Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. So once again, Prophet, thank you so much for taking time out to be on this program. And we look forward to having you in person in Tobago for our next program. So God bless you. Viewers, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. This has been the outpouring for your infilling, your refreshing, your uplifting, but most of all, for your transformation. Amen. Amen. And may God bless our nation. Amen to that. <laughs> pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Be viewing the outpouring for your refreshing and infilling. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour